So Mick, uh, excited to have you on on here and talking some footy. Um, talk a bit about your playing days and uh, now you're getting into some more coaching going forward. Um, I'd love to just start with really talking about key backs, which is obviously the role you yep. played mainly throughout your career in the AFL. Tell me, could you just start with talking about some real, maybe three key things you think make a good key back um, to do that job well? And whether you're in or under 18s or whether you're playing local 40 or VFL or let alone elite, what do you reckon makes a good yep. key back? And what sort of three key things? Three key things. No, first of all, thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm, I'm keen to talk all things footy. Um, no, well, th- three things, I suppose. Just that sort of, probably start with voice voice communication. Like you, the, the eyes and ears, you're behind everything usually. Like I played fullback, so I wasn't, I wasn't a centre-half back because I wasn't uh, wasn't fast or, or speed, speed or anything like that. I, I was I was right at the back. So I think um, being able to see the whole game and then communicate what, you, what you're what you seeing, what you're thinking to um, obviously teammates and then about opponents sort of thing. So I think you, you, you're literally the eyes and ears, or not, literally the eyes of the whole field of all your teammates, I think if you can communicate what you're thinking, where we should set up, um, time of the game, where we are on the field, that sort of thing. I think that is uh, that is uh, a key part of being obviously a key back. Um, like read, yeah, like reading the play, it's probably another another part. Whether to come forward, tell the boys to come back, sort of thing, putting them putting them in certain spots, I think is really important. Um, just just I'll jump in there. I'll jump in there, Mick. Um, yep. Now. Obviously, there's different talent levels of footballers, and obviously, you've played at elite level. If you could, if you were talking to a, a ten or a twelve year old about reading the play, and I'm just trying to break this down, what, what would that mean? How would you explain that to a twelve year old? That's a, that's a great question. I think um, uh, trying to, oh, I know it's really hard, but trying to think ahead, like usually if we've got them pinned in, in the in the corner of, of the field, like down their end. You, you obviously you'd be about 60, 70 meters away as a key back, getting ready for a long bomb sort of thing. If they're set, like being being able to see the field, if they're set up for a switch and and it's clearly on, you've got to be ready, obviously to to beat your opponent if it comes down. Like if it's if it's long down the line, you're ready to play one on one or or help someone else out. But also if it's if, if it's gonna like if you can see that they're open for a switch, you're ready. You're you're beaten. You're gonna read it before. Um, the forward and get out, get in front of them, play in front of them, get out to the other side of the ground. Obviously, before they are. So, I think trying to trying to read the uh, trying to th- think before the guy with the footy actually actually thinks. So, I know I didn't really explain that that well, but like just trying to trying to think two steps ahead, sort of thing, if you can. I know. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I explained that very well, but yeah, trying to yeah think ahead. Yeah, no, that, that's really cool. And it actually is a tough, that, that's why I sort of asked the question, yeah. it is a tough thing to explain. And and I think there is an element, you know, of people who play at the elite level obviously do that really well. Um, but it's cool trying to break that down. And just in terms of, and we love depth and um, all the detail in this podcast, so I'm happy to keep talking about it. it no, in terms of, you just mentioned about reading the play with the switch, just so I wouldn't mind just, just dive into that a little bit. So if you're you know, on the skinny side, say, and you look and you're seeing that there might be an opportunity for the opposition to switch. What, what, what are the cues? What are you seeing? Are you seeing a couple of players on the opposite flank or something? Or what are you looking for to see that switch is on for the opposition team? Absolutely. Like, obviously, that's 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 a big part of it. If there's players out there, you're obviously, as a defender, you've got to be ready to get across the ground. And you've got to beat your opponent across the ground. Because teams that, or all AFL teams practically now are playing... Uh, Front shoulder, playing in front of their opponent, trying to get to the outside before uh, before the forward, really, as defenders. So you've you've got to you've got to see that they're if they're open, they're probably going to switch. So you've got to get on the other side of the ground before your opponent, sort of thing. So, but also guy with the footy, obviously his eyes and stuff. Like a lot of guys try to like obviously when they get the footy, play on without playing on, like having a look without without having a look. Because obviously if you're telegraphing it you're going that way you're probably going to go that way sort of thing but you've just got to I know you're as a defender you're probably a kick away 50 metres it's hard to see but trying to trying to read the body language of the guy with the footy like some yep. teams obviously look for territory and, and they'll just kick along so they won't switch it um, but some teams obviously they're, they're looking they're looking for anything, like anything that's, that's coming up so they're having a look and 
watching body language if you, if you can. But obviously, yeah, as I just said, knowing the team as well, knowing the opposition. Richmond, for example, they get it going forward, kick it long, get it going forward. They probably don't switch as much. They try to get numbers to the contest and then just get it, get it going forward. Whereas, I don't know, someone like Geelong, I suppose, they're short kicking, trying to hit little targets here and there. They're not, they're probably not bombing it long. They, they probably switch a bit just to hit the target sort of thing. So, if you know, know the opposition as well, it's probably another thing. But um, yeah, just trying to read body language of yep. the kicker and then if there's people out, out for the switch. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Is there anything else you would recommend, sort of key backs to really try and do well? Um, obviously, you've got to be well, one on one contest is a big, big, big part of being a key back. Like, usually, obviously, there's two probably two key backs with a third sort of hybrid that can play big but also play small and can come across, sort of thing. So, with the two key backs, there's one that's like a big, usually a big monster takes the big monster forward, and then there's one that's center half forward that can take the runner sort of type operator. So, uh, like Nick Rewalt, uh, St Kilda, Nick Rewalt was sort of the running centre half forward, so you have to have a good runner, good athlete with him. And then um, Kaziski was would play deep, and he's a big, he's the big animal that you would have yep. to put a big forward on. So, yep. I think figuring out where you can play like that, being able to either be a big physical beast or, or or an animal that can run, sort of thing, is probably yeah. You got to figure out what, what what you are, and then once you figure that out, as a Big monster, big physical back. You've got to work on your craft. So um, I wasn't much of an athlete, so I was probably bigger. So I try to work my one-on-one stuff a lot. And yep. I played on Tom Hawkins, Josh Kennedy, like they're big, big men and just trying to be as physical as possible and, and trying to just hit them with everything because they are big and they play big and you've got to be big to attack them really. So learning yep. body work, positioning, how they play, what they want and what they don't want, and then obviously playing how I want. And then if you're a, a running type, just to – if you're on a running forward, just to bash them. Like, nobody wants to run if they're tired and getting whacked. And you've just – it's all, probably all about mental toughness for that sort of stuff, just trying to last 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 out against them, I guess. Yep. So you can run, run more. So, yeah, just trying to always think of what – what does a forward want? What what's their what's their go to and trying to negate that? I guess as part of that too. So, yeah, so as you've mentioned, if yeah, a few different key forwards. You've played on obviously a number of you know really good key forwards. What was what made your job really tough? What did a forward do that you really hated and um and and really uh, was hard to defend and hard to stop? I think movement, like movement, is. The worst. So my obviously my job is to stop you from getting the footy. And I'm if you're moving everywhere, I've got to watch you. I've got to try watch the ball. I've got to stand in a position that's able to do both. And if you're if I'm if I'm if I can see you, I can see the ball, and you're ducking off behind me. I've got to change my positioning so I've got my eye off the board and know where you are just to try and get in a good position again. Like I think just movement is is key for as a forward. Um. Josh Kennedy does it the best, like against West, like the West Coast. He is constantly moving. He he clocks up the K's flat out, and I'm I'm trying to get body on him and hit him to stop him from moving. And that, that's that's me not watching the ball, and it just takes everything it takes that away from me. So I think as a forward, if they if you can keep moving your defender around, um, is 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 probably the best way to go about it. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you found outside of that would make it really tough? Um. For you to defend? Some movement. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, if they can get a few touches early, get up the ground and then work, work their way back sort of thing. Um, like, I, I was pretty comfortable real deep, but if they can get up, get up, get up the ground, move me around a bit as a key, as a big key, I, I didn't rate that too much. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think early body work and making that first like contact is is, is pretty big as well. Like, if guys are ready for it, but if you can knock them off where they're standing, get them out of the way, sort of thing. Um, that's always that's always really good in the one-on-one -on -one contest, sort of stuff. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, I've been beaten a lot, but I just I can't even remember how they've done it. Like, everyone's is, different. Is, but I think um, you you mentioned yeah. um. 
Josh Kennedy, was he uh, the toughest opponent you had? Or who'd you find uh, was really hard to handle? Yeah, he's he's extremely tough. Like, because yeah. he's so strong, but he also moves really well. And he's he's very good at tick lead. He's good one on one, like strength wise. But like running, if he gets a run and jump, he's he's very hard to stop. So he's good both, yeah, strong and and being able to move. Like Tom Hawkins, obviously. A very big fella, hard to body against. So you've you've got to try to read the ball in the air and probably try hit him as well as hitting the ball at the same time. So you've got to change the game there. And then obviously you got Buddy. I played on Buddy a couple of times. Obviously a, a big man, but um just moves like yep. like fuck. Just a, just move. So he gets all the way up the ground. And I sort of when I played him, I tried to just leave him. I prefer to get touches up the ground. That that didn't faze me if I could just catch him on the way back. So just thinking you just everyone's different and you've just got to try yep obviously during the week what they're doing what they do well and trying to negate that as much as possible so those three are probably the best but there's no bad forwards in the afl no played. so they're all good and yeah you've just got to just got to do your homework i guess um is there you've obviously you're in the system you know eight seasons i think from looking through my my yep. uh a little bit of homework um yep was well, there any common co- um, common playing mistakes for the young fellas coming in that they just you just saw constantly happen with a young bloke who'd come into the club, maybe new draftee or someone um, that you saw that you might be able to point out for you know players who are listening to to avoid? Uh, I think just coming in thinking you're um, like obviously you you'd be a good player if you're getting drafted like that's that's understandable but let's but just like like knowing that you are and and then just, I don't know, like letting everyone know that, telling everyone that you're a good player, that sort of thing. <laughs> yep. You just, you get humbled pretty quick, um, especially from senior players like they, uh, like you, you, you're the new bloke, you've just got to, you've got to come in, get the work done and then like hopefully things happen from there. You just can't come in and expect, expect things to just happen for you around one sort of stuff. So I think, um, you just got to be humble, a bit humble. Come in, know that you've got to, you've got, you're starting from the bottom and you've got to work your way up, sort of thing. Don't come in thinking you're, you're the king and thinking you're just going to dominate and stuff because uh, AFL is different. It's different from from local and BFL and NAB. It's 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 different. It's bloody hard work and um, yeah. Look, I when I was younger, I was I was not very good, so I I didn't have a problem with uh with that sort of thing, but um. I um oh yeah I had to work pretty hard to, to get where I was but yeah no like just put in the work I think like that's that's probably where it's at like, yeah because it's, well, like, it's, it's interesting I always think um so when you get drafted even if you're a star junior right and you're in the under 18s and you get picked top 10 right top 10 drafts that's a really yep. good yeah good effort you're into the system you you've almost got a name because you're a top 10 pick but when you think about it you got players in the AFL system for the last for the last 15 years of top 10 picks. So you got 150 100%. blokes rolling around who have just done exactly what you've just done in the AFL straight away, let alone forgetting all the other players who become superstars outside of the top 10. Um, exactly. So it is amazing, isn't it? Once you get, once you leave that, that age group competition to go to the open competition or the elite, it's, it's astonishing how much talent there is. There is. A, it's unbelievable. And like, yeah, it's so hard to, to get drafted is so hard, and then to get an AFL game is is even harder. And to play three hundred and get four hundred games, Sean Burgoyne is outrageous. So yeah, no, it's so competitive. Like they're your teammates, but you're playing against them. They're like you, you're competing against them. So it's um, it's uh, it's amazing to even get on the list to be honest. And I was lucky enough to play a few games. So I was um, I I love every minute of it. So yeah, no, it's it's amazing. You play with a number of you know really. You know, champion players of the game between three clubs at Collingwood, Essendon and Hawthorne. Is there a player that really stood out um, in the way they went about their football from a preparation standpoint? And and I guess even, yeah, and then rolled into how they went about their footy come the weekend? Uh, obviously, in drafting Collingwood, Pendles is always, like, you know, be, you don't play 300 games wherever he's played for no reason. Like, he's, he's, He's uh, how he goes about things is amazing. Like his attention to detail is 
second to none. Like he just does everything right, trains hard, gets the best out of himself, and then gets the best out of others as well. Like he's he's phenomenal like that. Um, like he does, like the recovery, does extra work. It's goes gets extra massage, does whatever you got to do just to get the body right. And like, there's no wonder that he's so good. Won BNF's grand final. Like he's played for this long and still going at a high level because he just he puts everything he has into everything. So it's he's obviously extremely good. Um, who else we played with? Been around a few. Dyson Heppel, another one. Like, no, nah, they're both skippers. Like no, no wonder they're skippers. The way they go about it, like just. Above and beyond, sort of, sort of type stuff is is unreal. Those those two are obviously up there, playing uh, with play, players that I've been with. So yeah. On the coaching side of things, again, you you've worked under a number of good coaches. Is there a coaching that you work with, or even someone you saw from afar that you really admire? Isn't there? Is there a reason why? Um, I, don't know. I really like. Tim Hardwick, how he how he went about it, like he got there and the, and like obviously Richmond were doing great, but he just sort of flipped them around and they got tough and changed the way they play and and then they dominated and they've dominated for the last few years. Like they've been a very good side for a few years now. Like I like how he went about it. But like as you sort of said, I've been with Bucks my first couple of years. Uh Woosha at the at the Dons and then obviously Alistair Clarkson um, he's been there, done that sort of thing. So, Clarko's Clarko's very good at well, was, was very good at what he what he did. He's obviously not coaching now, but like he didn't win all those premierships for nothing. Like he he's very good at what he does. So he's he's obviously another one that's that's been right up there. But yeah, those those three plus Tim Mark, like I've, I've been pretty lucky to be under yeah. those types of coaches, really. Yeah, absolutely. No, I was actually I was listening him down. I was thinking, yeah, you have um. Had some some uh, absolute star coaches. Um, is there a player you've come across in your journey that sort of exceeded expectation? Like you can sort of like exceeded what people thought they could capable of. And how do they do that? What do they do to, to achieve those sort of results? Yeah, that's a great question. Like, uh, uh, like he's only young at the moment. Like Jordan, do you know Jordan Ridley? Obviously, yeah, yeah, came into the system. He's extremely skinny. He weighed about 20 kilos, I reckon. I mean, the best, and there wasn't much of him. But, um, like, he's, yeah, very skinny. Like, he was skillful, but there was just, like, it just wasn't, I don't know, he was just extremely skinny. Like, he just got bashed around a little bit. And, um, like, he hasn't even put on that much size, to be honest. But, like, <laughs> no, yeah, it's a little bit. But, like, he is just, he's just, like, I don't know what's happening. He just switched, switched, he's, like, switch to switch really and now he's just literally dominating i don't know if it yeah. was they didn't give him an opportunity when he was a bit younger like when he first got drafted but once he sort of got a sniff he took that opportunity and like obviously we've seen what he's done so far he's mm. i think he won bmf 2020 yep yeah that he played and now he's just sort of going up and up sort of thing i think he was in the might have been the top 40 for all australian squad at some stage i'm not sure but I think, yeah. like he'd be close like he's been close. going that well yep yeah like like I, when I first saw him, I thought like we could literally a strong wind would just blow him over, sort of thing. But like he's just changed his body. He's gotten very obviously very skillful. And he just sort of trolls that back line and does what he wants. Really, he's he's dominating at the moment. So I'm I'm sure he'll dominate again this year. But um, yeah, he was he was one that I thought was really amazing to see, like transformation. I'm I'm, I'm great. Like we're good mates and I get along with him really well. And it was just awesome to see him dominate. Like, dominate yeah. Footy. Yeah. So, well. Listen, listeners know I am a Bombers fan, so I, I do watch oh, them yeah. closely. And um, <laughs> yeah, and it was astonishing actually. Like it was, he thought his first three years he didn't get much opportunity. And but the funny thing no. was, the few games he played, I actually thought he played really quite well for a you know second third year player. But Absolutely. no one probably picked that he was going to be a best and fairest winner in his fourth season. And what he play? thirty games by the end of that year, and he was a BNF winner. Exactly. So I, I don't no, even think he's played fifty games, games yeah. has he? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't think so. I'm not entirely sure. I don't, no. Like, it doesn't seem like, like, he's just seems so young still, but he just, on age has matured and, like, he's, yeah, he's just dominating. Like, it's awesome yep. to see and he's only going to get better, obviously, as well. So, it's, yep. it's been, yeah, been awesome. Yeah, and no, it'd be really cool to sort of find out in that 2019, 2020 preseason what, what switched um, for him. Um, yeah. So maybe down the track, he might be one of the goal guests I'll have to get on and have a chat to him. So, um, yeah. 
In training, is there any myths or mistakes you see out in the training track? Uh, like doing, like doing more. Is it like a lot of guys try to do heaps of extras and stuff like that? But I think when you're doing extras, you've got to do do the right stuff. Like that that helps you. A lot of guys are like, I don't know, like repetition of kicking and all that sort of stuff and and that's awesome like obviously get the foot in your hands it's, it's great but I think um uh, you gotta do the right sort of kicking I guess like not just kicking for the sake of kicking if you want to get better you gotta put yourself under pressure you gotta have someone chasing you down and you're trying to hit up a forward sort of thing not just sort of roll off a cone hit a forward but at least I'm doing it sort of thing if, if you gotta do it with game like pressure I feel and it doesn't need to take a thousand reps to do if you do it if you just do 20, 15, 20 good ones, like you just, just at high intensity, I think is, is the way to go about it. Um, yeah. So I just think in qual- obviously quality, not quantity. So if you, if you're ever going to do anything, you do it as, like, as best you can under game like pressure. I think it helps a lot. So in saying that, getting the foot in your hands as much as possible is always a good thing. So yeah. Yep. It's a bit of a broader question. We have touched on, um, a number of things, but is, did you have any like key principles for better and more consistent football? Um, is there any sort of overarching things you would want a team and want a, want a player to get in place to ensure that they, you know, constantly improving, constantly, you know, playing good footy? Yeah. Um, uh, look, I'm, I wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't very good. So I, I tried to watch and, and, Get around other players, obviously. Like at Essendon, Michael Hurley was was really good for me. He's obviously been around and, and done it a fair bit. And I tried to watch his footage when he played and and stuff like that. And then I'd um, with him, we'd watch forwards and stuff as well, like from other teams and stuff like that. So I think getting in contact with senior players is always handy, or senior people that have been there, done it, sort of thing. Um, like I don't, I don't think I'm. I'm good or anything, so I'm trying to learn and be a sponge as much as possible. Whenever I, uh, wherever I went, no matter how old I was, I was trying to learn. Because yeah, I've, I've, I've still got so much to learn. Even like coaching wise, I've got so much to learn. So I'm trying to just jump on everyone and ask questions and be a sponge, really. So I think yeah, senior players like they've been there, they've done it. If you can get onto them and and get around them, um, I think that's that's the way we go and all the way I went about it, and it seemed to work. I seemed to survive in the AFL for us. For a little while, so that's yeah, that's how I did it. Yeah, I think I even watched. Uh, yeah, I remember a clip always stuck with me was um, Brendan Goddard had a clip and you know obviously throwing at games, and he always talked about every year he was trying to get better and better every year, and I, I think that's just this mindset, isn't it? Like even you know from <laughs> the juniors to seniors, and then coaching, and whether you coach for thirty years, you know even Clarko who's constantly trying to get better. It's just it's just a trait, isn't it, of the of, you know, all, all, you know, good performers in their field. Absolutely. And the game changes all the time. You might be good one year at, I don't know, like it's, as you sort of said, like getting the ball forward, getting rushing, getting the ball forward sort of thing. And then next year there might be a flood of some sort. They might change the rules and more defenders, more defenders getting back. So you might have to change it, go around them sort of thing. Like game changes all the time. You've just got to change with it. Yep. Change new, new game styles, get better, that sort of way. So, yeah, absolutely. Like, being like I played with BJ and he's he was always trying to get better, like trying to get others better, um, yelling a lot. But no, nah, <laughs> he's he the ripper. He's a great seller. Um, but yeah, no, hundred percent, I agree. Books or documentaries or something uh, that you might recommend people check out? Uh, look, I haven't read too much. Oh, like I've only just started coaching. So I've read too many, uh, uh, like none at all, really, to be honest. But like I heard, I've been told that Paul Ruse's book is really good um yep. he wrote a book and um that's something i should get into i actually i probably should read it i've been told to read it so i should read it but um i heard that's really good coaching wise but yeah other than that look i haven't really uh like i haven't really watched any any docos or, or read any books or anything like that so yeah yep that's cool if i um gave you like a banner to put up on you know the door of every you know, young player who plays the game. Is there any uh, certain thing you want that message to be? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I think, like, just 
like, I don't know, something to do with work, like get to work. Yeah, something like that. Like just get to work. Like yep. you're starting you're starting from the young, you're starting from the bottom. You've got to work your way up to, to get a game. You've got to work. You've got to work hard. Yep. But yeah, like just something to do with work, I think. Like it's 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 a hard it's hard. Like I was in the system for two years when I first started. I thought I'd like any young guy, I thought I would dominate and play 300 games, but I didn't work hard enough the first time, and I and I was out of the system pretty quick. So it, it can end like that. And then I thought, um, once I started working in the real world, I thought uh, this is really hard, and I don't want to do this. I want to get back in the AFL. So I so I worked, and I I played I played VFL, and I and I got better, and got back in the system, and and then played another. No, six years. So I think, I think you've just got to get to work. Like yep. you've got to do more. You've got to look after your body. You've got to sleep. You got to find time for yourself as well, not just footy. You got to think about other things. Um, but yeah, you've just got to, you just got to work. And the AFL has, has so many opportunities with like people to help you get better and on field, off field, anything. But um, you really got to jump on board with that. So, but yeah, no, just yeah, get to work. So, no, I really appreciate, oh, mate, that. coming on the show and talking some footy. Um, and, yeah, all the best for the coming season, mate. No, too easy. Thanks for having me. I had fun. Appreciate it. Cheers.